glad to be back with you. You know, this week I just thought I'd do something lighter. You know, I usually do a lot of hardcore type fishing technique or um, some sort of bio biology, but I thought I'd just have fun for once and do something intellectually stimulating but not so deep. Although, maybe it doesn't sound very light from the opening, but that's because there are some catastrophes out there that uh, scientists tell us are possible, like an asteroid hitting Earth, or a super volcano exploding out in Yellowstone, um, or the giant earthquakes at you know, the San Andrea Fault where part of California could fall in the Pacific Ocean. And so we know about those, we hear about those, probably not going to happen certainly not in your lifetime but there's actually one closer to home here in Louisiana and you may have heard of this but there is this possibility that the Mississippi River could change course up where the Atchafalaya River starts and the Mississippi River would end up going to the Gulf down the course of the Atchafalaya River instead of through Baton Rouge and through New Orleans. So uh, for me here in Baton Rouge and uh, the folks down in uh, New Orleans, that would significantly change our cities. So I don't want to get too serious about this. Again, the Corps of Engineers says not probably not going to happen, really low risk of it happening, um, but it's possible. And there's a professor at LSU, Yi Jun Chu, that has done probably a lot more publicity about this. He's done some lectures, and he has some some videos on YouTube. If you really want to get interested, uh, you know, you really want to dig into this and get concerned about it, um, it isn't really it isn't keeping me up at night. But this show is about fishing and fishing related information, and so I'm really intrigued to think about this. That if this did happen, how would it change the fishing in South Louisiana? Especially as a trout fisherman, how would that change how I pursue speckled trout? First of all, you should know that the Army Corps of Engineers actually identified this as a possibility back in the 50s. And so to keep the Mississippi River in its current course, they decided to build some flood control structures because they f determined that by 1990, it would have switched from its current path over to the Atchafalaya where it would go down through Morgan City to the Gulf. So it's not a totally crazy idea. It was, uh, it, it was on Corps of Engineers' minds. It's always been there. And so they took some measures to do that. And what they did was they put in flood control structures. So if you go up from New Orleans, up past Baton Rouge, you come up here to this spot. This is the Red River coming in. And here are three structures that they built. These are basically dams across channels. They allow, you can see the water running through this channel, so they allow some water to run about 30% of the Mississippi River to run through these channels. I mean, they may not always have these open, but uh, depending on the river level, they may open or close these. But it runs over, joins the Red River, and then that, flow, that forms the Atchafalaya, runs down through the biggest swamp in the U.S., Atchafalaya Swamp, down through Morgan City, right here and then on into the Gulf and it's building a nice Delta down there on the Gulf so the catastrophic theory is here that these structures any one of these could fail it probably wouldn't be this one because this one is kind of a backflow channel but any of these two channels could fail these structures could get knocked down this one apparently almost got knocked down in 1973 or maybe it was it might have been this one one of these 
almost got knocked out. I think it was this one in a big flood in 1973. So that would let the Mississippi River, which wants to turn anyway and take this route down the Chafalaya, which is now shorter and steeper than the route it's currently going. And they can open these gates to relieve pressure, all three of these. They can also open the Merganza Spillway, which is way down here. And you'll see it right here. This is the Merganza Spillway. There are gates right here in the middle. And when the water is high, even what we see last year, it's not uncommon that all of this green area in, in this pasture land here is all underwater. This is just a giant big lake. You have levees running along here and the old river lake becomes completely flooded. There's a marina right here or a, or a landing and the, the water will come all the way up into here. You can't even park, you can't launch. These buildings are on pile, uh, they're on, they're floating buildings that are attached to these large pilings, tall pilings, and so that it'll just float right up. They can open the Morganza spillway, and this is the spillway in here between these levees. It runs to the Atchafalaya and relieves the pressure upstream so that these structures don't collapse. So let's just have some fun talking about what happens to the fishing in southeast Louisiana if the Mississippi River were to jump over to the Atchafalaya? First of all, salinity. You know I talk a lot about salinity and I watch the salinity a lot and I'm always look at so much revolves around salinity. So that's the big change here. The salinity, the full ocean salinity starts to come in because the river is not there to keep it out. Now one I think misconception is that New Orleans becomes landlocked. Well not landlocked but it loses its river. It, it actually becomes kind of a seafront city because there will be a little bit of fresh water I'm sure that would come, the river water that would still come down the old course at least for some time. But essentially the water in the river here would be at sea level and would be sea water coming straight from the Gulf up between the levees to New Orleans. So here in St. Bernard Parish where we have so much river water pumping out into all these bays from the Mardi Gras Pass and Carnarvon, Port St. Philip, all these areas, there's no more fresh water. These old bones here of the river, this is all gone. All of this vegetation is not going to be full salt water tolerant. So it's all, it dies and it doesn't hold the soil together. A few storms and this is demolished. I'm sure the levees will still be here, but uh, they too will start falling apart as because there's no fresh water anymore just the salt water so all of this is basically gone just washed out none of this can handle the salt water and same way over here on this side and the river is just too far away it's going to be way over here by vermilion bay it's not going to be able to provide fresh water to these areas. Now there will be some fresh water coming from the Pearl River. That would be the biggest source of fresh water. Uh, the, these smaller rivers that dump into Lake Pontchartrain won't provide much to offset the ocean water that's coming in. But the trout will then be spawning in Lake Bourne possibly in Lake Pontchartrain. Lake Pontchartrain probably going to be a very good place for oysters. And in the winter time, we're going to be catching trout in Maripal, in all these small rivers coming in, the Amit, and all of these rivers along here, like the Blind River where it comes in on this diversion canal area. We're going to be going up here looking for trout in all these little bayous. Of course, 
all of these cypress swamps are all going to die. They can't handle the new high salinity in here either. All the submerged vegetation is going to die. So Lake Pontchartrain is going to be completely transformed. Not going to look anything like the way it was. Slidell will become quite a seaside city. Of course, now the one disadvantage here is compared to Florida, you, we still have this giant shelf that was created by the Mississippi River. So it's still going to be shallow in here. It's not going to be deep water, not the blue water fishing. Uh, but still a lot of saltwater species would come up there. And the habitat for the speckled trout and redfish will be significantly reduced. You'll be catching them up in Lake Salvador and all up in here. Uh, this almonds, all of this area, you're going to have speckled trout up in there. But the habitat for their growth is going to be significantly reduced. So the population is going to be much less, but easily accessible all year long from Baton Rouge and Slidell and New Orleans and all these areas around here. So while it would be easier to find the trout, especially in the summertime, I uh, wouldn't have to run that far to find the trout. There wouldn't be that many there. I think it would be a much more like you have over here uh, on the Mississippi and Alabama coast where you do have trout, but they're not in numbers like we have in the estuary of the Mississippi River as it, where it is now. But fortunately, the Corps of Engineers does not believe that this would happen anytime soon. They believe it would be a low risk of happening and of course you know this is uh, all kind of lighthearted but uh, the fishing is insignificant the impact of the fishing is insignificant to the impact that it would have on the trade uh, at least temporarily they said it could be a huge impact economically on the country uh, even create food shortages uh, because of the Mississippi River and how important that is to trade and commerce and uh, the movement of goods. Uh, of course, you could you could rebuild all of the structure again, infrastructure uh, on the new river course, but uh, that would take years, and so there it would be uh, some really rough times. We certainly wouldn't want to see that happen. Uh, although Baton Rouge itself would could potentially have speckled trout right on its banks because from what I can tell the river is deep enough at Baton Rouge that you could have as much as uh, six feet of sea level in the trench which would be the riverbed the old riverbed of the Mississippi River so you could have Baton Rouge speckled trout fishery so that's a fisherman's look at the catastrophic event of the Mississippi River changing course. And I hope it was uh, more lighthearted for you than heavy. Uh, again, let's hope that the Corps of Engineers believes what it's saying and uh, there's a very low chance of that actually happening. And I think it, that is probably the case. Hey, if you liked the video, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't to.